Now in the previous question we used a PV plot. PV plots are used a lot in thermal physics and they're just a graph with pressure along the y-axis and volume along the x-axis. Now any line on a PV plot shows what's known as a path which is a way a gas can quasi-statically move from one state to another. So quasi-statically just means that it's, it's near equilibrium. So it needs to be near equilibrium for temperature to mean anything. And so let's consider these lines on a PV plot. These are actually what's known as isotherms. So isotherms are constant temperature lines. Now anything on a PV plot is just shown for one gas. And so for, for one gas, the number of moles is constant. So we can write the ideal gas law as PV is equal to nRT. Now everything on the right hand side in a constant temperature process is constant. We're not changing the number of moles. R, that's a constant, and T, we're keeping the temperature constant. So we can say that PV is equal to constant for a constant temperature process. And so we can write this as P is equal to the constant over V, which a lot of you will probably recognize as the formula for a hyperbola. Because if we write this as Y is equal to K over X, in this case P is on the Y axis and V is on the X axis, this is the way you usually write a hyperbola. So isotherms or constant temperature lines on a PV plot are drawn as hyperbola as in this diagram here. So we're now going to be using PV plots to consider molar specific heats for gases. You've probably heard about specific heats for solids and liquids such as water before, but gases also have a specific heat. So the specific heat is the amount of energy that needs to be added to raise one mole of a gas by one Kelvin. So let's consider this PV plot here. What we've got is an initial state and a variety of different final states. So there's different paths we can take here, shown in the kind of reddish color to get to different final states. Now because these final states are all along the same isotherm at a temperature T plus delta T, we know that they've all got the same temperature. The and they've all come from the same initial state. So the change in temperature along each of these paths is the same. And because previously we saw that the internal energy was proportional to the temperature, it tells us that the change in internal energy for each of these different paths is actually the same. So the internal energies set by the temperature of the initial state and the temperature of the final state. But the work done to get from one isotherm to another isotherm actually depends on which path we choose because the work is the area underneath the curve. So the work and the heat added are dependent on the path that we choose. So the internal energy of any state is given by, for a monotonic gas, 3 over 2 nKBT. For any gas, we'd have an F here instead of the 3. So the change in internal energy is 3 over 2 nKB delta T. And so if the temperature changes by a fixed amount, the internal energy changes a fixed amount. But the work done is dependent upon the path, so Q is also dependent upon the path. So we can write that Q is equal to the specific heat times the change in temperature. But this is really the definition of the specific heat here. It's related to the amount of heat added and how that changes the temperature of the gas. More use, it's more useful to use the molar specific heat, which is the amount of heat we need to add per mole of the gas to change the temperature 1 Kelvin or 1 degree C. So at constant volume, we write the heat added is equal to NCV delta T. So this is the molar specific heat at constant volume. And at constant pressure, we write Q is equal to NCP delta T. 
The constant volume case is when we're going from I to F. In that case, the volume here is not changing. The constant pressure case is when we're going from I to F dash. In that case, the pressure here is not changing. Here's a question for you to think about. Which one's going to be larger, the specific heat at constant volume or the specific heat at constant pressure? Here's the hint. The change in internal energy is equal to Q plus W. Q is defined as NCV delta T for the constant volume case and as NCP delta T for the constant temperature case. And the work is equal to minus VI to VFPdV.